microdosing hallucinogenics for the removal, healing of depression or mental illness, PTSD, whatever, a Christian per response perspective. No, run away. It's kind of like, I'm going to throw gas on a fire to put it out because gas is a liquid and liquids put out fire. Now, obviously, I am being a little bit facetious and I'm not trying to be mean. And the reason I'm saying no is it's self-administered pharmaceuticals. Dude, get help by all means, but it, it, this ain't amateur hour. You can crack your egg. You can lose your mind. You can trash yourself out. And microdosing is a low burn uh, poison as opposed to the quick hit. Both have, you know, some real problems. Now, do I want you to have help and freedom from depression? This is in response to a viewer. Um, yeah, sure. I've had a spirit of depression. And in my case, I had to forgive a bunch of people. And then the spirit left because it was unforgiveness that gave this spirit, I mean, a real demon, access into my life. I'm not saying all depression or mental illness is a demon. A lot of it, I think, is. Um, and at this point, I'll say there's a five-part series on exorcism by Father Vincent Lampert. And it doesn't mean you need an exorcism, okay? But he gives the outline on what causes people demonic problems, activity, and what are the solutions. And basically, uh, he, you know, I'm not Catholic, but I really like him and what he has to say. And if, you know, some of the things you don't agree with in Catholicism occur, fine, ignore them. But he has a lot of solid information on what to do. Forgiveness is one of the major issues, um, not issues, one of the major ways you deal with it. Now, there's also Matt Lozano, Session 2 on Forgiveness, that is brilliant. So getting back to doing drugs to get yourself free. Oh, yeah. Now, if you're, if there's a clinical psychologist or whatever, psychologist or psychiatrist, that's one thing because they're medically trained. I don't agree with everything that they say and do, but at least for the most part, you're not going to get yourself short-circuited. So no, don't do it. And also, there are entities attached to the hallucinogenics. Not every time that you do a hallucinogenic are you going to get possessed, but they're going to influence you, and whether you know it or not. And they, have, they don't have your best interest at heart. With depression... I would suggest, um, and also mental illness in general, seek, all right, I'm going to go the Jesus route. Okay, forgive, repent, walk in love. Seek, uh, read the word of God. Find out where there might be lies in your life that you're believing about yourself or others and replace the lies with truth. And then also you will be convicted. It's not like, oh, you suck. It's more like, dude, uh, kind of getting it wrong. And what, like, if you didn't know you needed to forgive, you need to forgive. If you didn't know that you were beloved, no matter what, now you do know. You know, let's say someone said, oh, you'll never be forgiven. And you did something irreprehensible and you think you're, you're the one that can't be forgiven. No, that's a lie. You can be forgiven. You're not irreprehensible. You're beloved. You know, this is simple stuff. But if you've been beat up all your life and you don't know it, that's some of the roots, root causes of mental illness. Or let's say you got attacked and you have trauma or you've been in war and you need help. Um, you know, that you have flashbacks and trauma. The Spirit of God is real. And He comes into our lives. He has power, love, and a sound mind. These things, power, love, and a sound mind, are what He does 
that's what he brings into our life so that if we are weak, he becomes strong. If we're broken, he fixes it, fixes us. If we're lost, we get found by him, and it is by his love, faith that works through love, that all of this is done. So word of God, uh, big thing. Then praying, talking to God like you would a friend, and just giving him your junk, because he will talk back. And he will bring you into... Uh, I don't know if the word is equilibrium, but it is the kingdom of heaven. It is the presence of God. The presence of God is heaven, and in there, there is the fullness of joy and healing. So, for the microdosing, no, because these things, they do lead us to uh, spiritual conditions, but for the most part, unless God shows up, it's going to lead you away. Oh, there goes God. Um, it's going to lead you away from him. Uh, you know, everything is one and there's all causation and it's all delusion and it's, uh, just, we're all connected. I'm like, that's the zip code I'm talking about with the hallucinogenic. That's the entity that is involved with the hallucinogenics. We are not all one. Everything is not one. There is good. There is evil. And it, we are able and supposed to discern the difference between them, to do good and to cut off evil. And if we have a problem, you know, that we've been hit by evil and damaged by it, we can be healed. And if we've been evil and we've caused it, that we can actually be changed by a new spirit transmuted to the real trans stuff it is a trans a change of substance it is from evil to good he can do that and it is by his spirit these drugs don't do it they'll get you somewhere and it's like going to vegas you're either going to use someone improperly for a good time or you're going to be used improperly for a good time and that's, I'm talking about mental, emotional, and spiritual activity that is not beneficial. So that's what I got to say about the microdosing and hallucinogenics in general. Not a fan. Don't do it. Go to Jesus. Ask for help. Seek out professional help. I would suggest Christian professional help. And then word of God, find a good church that operates in power, love, and a sound mind that gifts of the spirit or they call it deliverance, um, inner healing. It's another good word. Um, and then pray, talk to God as you would a friend and, and let him communicate with you. There are other things such as communion, look into it. Baptism, huge, Acts 238, receiving a new spirit, laying on of hands. These are, these are things that are powerful in the body of Christ because we are all living a perpetual spiritual moment, and with Jesus, it can be good and great. And it's meant for you. So order your Jesus today. Give him your heart. He'll give you his, and then follow after him. Hold on, because it's going to be a wild ride, but I think you're going to like it. Have a great day. See you. Bye.